Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to a fantastic session we have lined up for you uh, this morning, my time, of course, and uh, focus time this morning, to kick off the first Friday of the first week of DevToberfest. Thank you all so much for joining. Thanks for your comments so far in the chat. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to Luis and to Radhesh and Jodel and everybody else who's joined. Um, I'm going to introduce somebody who needs probably no introducing. My good friend and uh, partner in code crime, Volker Buzek. Um, I love listening to Volker. I've seen Volker many times at Inside Track sessions and similar events, and I always learn a ton from whatever he has to say. So, and I'm sure you will do too. So, without further ado, let me please uh, present to you Volker, who's going to be talking to us on uh, release 2.0 of VDI 5, uh, looking at some new features and also talking about migration from version one. Volker, over to you. Thanks, DJ. And uh, thanks for all the flowers. Uh, I'll make that uh, bank deposit later in the day. <laughs> no, so this is me, Volker Buzek. Um, I'm a development architect. I work at JNS Soft, which is a highly specialized tech consultancy here in Germany. I'm an SAP mentor as well. And um, you can reach me um, in the socials under the usual uh, handle that you see here on screen. And I just happened so I also wrote a book together with my good colleague, uh, Marius Obert, former developer advocate at SAP as well on uh, SAP UI frameworks for enterprise developers. But uh, today's session, of course, is about VDI 5 and specifically about VDI 5 2.0. Um, for those of you who have worked with the tool already, um, who have some experiences, apologies, but for those of you new to the game, I'll uh, introduce VDI 5 here, what it is, what it works, or how it works. So what it is, it's an open source tool and it's an end-to-end -end testing tool. Um, it's even the official end-to-end -end testing tool for UI5. And as you can see on the left-hand side of that slide, it's based on WebDriver IO. Now there's a couple of, uh, well, peculiar peculiarities um, about the naming thing. So uh, you can see the spelling is v uh, WDI5, but we pronounce it VDI5 because the W like, trips your tongue every time you say it. And um, because it's an extension to WebDriver IO, so AKA service in WebDriver IO terms or in WebDriver IO speak, um, it has to adhere to the official naming uh, pattern of WebDriver IO extensions. And this is why its technical name is WDIO UI5 service. Technical name, also the name of the NPM package. Um, but the common name, as I said, is VDI5. Um, it was developed by JNS Soft initially, but about two years ago, we handed it over to the UI5 community, and it's ever since um, developed by the community for the community in an open source manner on GitHub. Um, how does it work? You can see here on the screen, VDI5 serves uh, two scopes. So the one is uh, the Node.js scopes where the actual tests run. And uh, the tests then use UI5's record replay API in the browser scope to retrieve UI5 controls, hand them back to the Node.js scope, and then in Node.js, you have all API methods of the retrieved UI5 control at hand for you um, to utilize. And this is also um, one of the unique features. Um, you do not have friction between um, operating on a UI5 control, be it in Node.js space or in the browser space, because the API methods are the same. And also um, the lifecycle of VDI5 automatically syncs with the UI5 app under test. So you do not have to wait for specific actions to happen. VDI5 will, with the help of the record replay API, wait until um, the UI5's lifecycle is finished until the next operation starts. Um, what do you need um, in terms of tooling in order to use VDI5? Um, you need some sort of a web server that serves the UI5 app under test. And then obviously you need VDI5, the NPM module installed. Um, 
Now let's dive straight in. That's um, what it is about slides. Um, what I'm going to do now in this session, I'm planning on at least um, showing you four blocks of content. So the first will be um, a little thing on how VDI 5 looks, handles itself from a pure user perspective. So you using VDI 5 for testing an app. Um, then I'm going to show how to migrate from VDI 5.1 to VDI 5.2. Um, after that, we'll look at some feature highlights specific to VDI 5.2 that are not in VDI 5.1 anymore. And at the end, we're going to plunge and take a sort of a deep dive into the VDI 5 code base itself that might uh, hopefully motivate uh, some of you to contribute to VDI 5 in one way or the other, because as I said, it's an open source tool. It's maintained by the community for the community. So um, I was thinking uh, I'll start from the very ground up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a folder TS. And in there, I'm going to just bootstrap a um, TypeScript UI5 app. So with the help of the easy UI5 generator, I'll just pick TS app down here. And then I'll answer um, all the prompts here with the default. So the application ID should use open UI5 latest version of the framework. I'm not going to specify the author. I want to create a new directory, initialize a Git repository. While this is happening and installing and bootstrapping the application, I'm just going to go ahead into um, another terminal here. And I'm going to do the same thing for a JavaScript app, for a plain JavaScript UI5 app. So again, easy UI5 generator. And instead of um, a TypeScript app, I'm just going to pick a regular app, as in JavaScript app, UI5 JavaScript app, same thing. I'm going to answer all the defaults just by enter. And then we're going to look at the application here. So on the left uh, hand side of the screen, you see the TypeScript app. On the right hand side, uh, the JavaScript app. If I do an NPM start here, now oh, I have to change it to the folder first and PM start here. So this is what the TypeScript app looks like. Um, well, what should I say? You can press this button. It says, hello, hello world. OK. So let's look at the JavaScript app. I'm doing an NPM start there. Oh, again, I have to change it to the folder, NPM start. And well, surprise, surprise, it looks exactly the same. So it's the same app once in TypeScript once in JavaScript that, that can say hello. Uh, and by the way, um, now that we're into the live coding stuff here, um, DJ was so nice to volunteer watching the chat. So you can ask questions at any time and interrupt me if you have specific questions and then I'll try to answer them on the go. So anyway, now um, we have the TypeScript app and the JavaScript app. And uh, what's new in VDI 5.2.0, it's an enhanced um, init process. Let's put it this way. So if I do an NPM init VDI 5 latest dash 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 TS, so the double dash is to pass on the TypeScript flag from the NPM script to the actual um, VDI 5 initialization. It's going to um, bootstrap VDI 5 straight into that application. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, just without the TypeScript flag, because on the right side, we have the regular JavaScript app. So this installs um, a configuration file, or installs it, it copies a configuration file into the respective folder, web app test end-to-end. -end. So this is per convention, the default path for the end-to-end -end tests. And what's new is um, in the VDI 5.2 bootstrap, it copies a sample test file. So um, if I do in here on the left side now, and, and you have five surf of the application, so that the application is up again at port 8080. This is the TypeScript app. And down here, if I change into that very same folder, and I simply go again into the application folder, and I do an NPM run VDI 5 here, there's no more test file for you to initially code, but it's already put in there. And what it does, you can see it, um, it starts Chrome. It does a little logging thing. You, so you can see that VDI5 logger, uh, the VDI5, VDI5's logger works. 
and then it has a yet to be defined test in there, but it gives you a skeleton of sorts. And the same thing holds true up or for the JavaScript app, of course. Let me split this terminal as well. So I'm going to do an npx ui5 serve here for the JavaScript app. So it's at localhost 8080 again. I change into the folder in the JavaScript folder here, and I do an npm run vdi5. And again, need to change into the application folder. I forget this all the time. NPM run vdi5. And it will do the exact same thing. It'll um, start Chrome, it will run a basic set of commands. And there you are, you have um, your app under test and you have VDI 5 set up all the way from um, all plugins necessary um, until the very test file that you um, can then start working on. Now, the point of this, of course, is um, you were used, if you have experience with VDI 5, the NPM in it VDI 5 was the same command as before. So this is the same command in VDI 5.1 as it is in VDI 5.2. So same, same, no breaking changes, nothing new to do. It's um, also a little spoiler for the next um, block I want to show you, the migration thing. Um, there is no migration. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, updating the packages. Well, spoiler alert. So anyway, um, let's look at the migration part. I'm going to switch to VS Code now. And what you can see here in VS Code, oh, let me first shut down this application again. What you can see in VS Code here is it's again a freshly bootstrapped um, JavaScript app with Yo Easy UI 5 with the Yo Man generator. Um, but in contrast to um, what I've done right now in the terminal, there's already a test file in here. So what does the test file do? Um, it clicks the button to open the dialog as the test says here, and then closes the dialog again. So it's essentially the same thing that I did right now, or that I did previously, it clicks on say hello, and then it clicks on okay, and that's the end of the test. So let me split the terminal here. And before I'll run the test, I'll show you the package JSON file here. And you can see that this here still uses uh, VDI 5.1, or as the technical name is, WDIO-UI5-Servers. So this is VDI 5.1 still, okay? So let me run the test here. And surprise, surprise, so it opens the app, it clicks on say hello, clicks on okay, and that's it. So nothing uh, spectacular with this. Um, and in terms of migration from VDI 5.1 to VDI 5.2, as I just said, it's essentially a matter of doing a package update. So I'm using a little tool here called npm check updates with its shorthand ncu in the terminal that by the way, every one of you should use if you work in the Node.js universe, it's just too handy of a tool. And what you see here then, or what NCU does is it, check, it checks for um, all kinds of upgrade paths to the packages you use. So um, here it realizes that uh, WebDriver.io, the base for VDI5, is now at version eight. So it suggests um, all those to be upgraded to um, version eight. It also suggests to update Chrome driver. Okay, so we do this, a word on this in a minute. And of course, most importantly, it also suggests to update VDI 5, or as I said, the technical name, WDIO does your service to do that zero. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, I toggled those, I press return, and I answer run NPM install with a yes. And um, so while it's installing the dependencies, uh, we can already stop the web server up here and then relaunch it again once the dependencies are finished installing. And then on the left side in the package JSON, you can already see that it upgraded um, VDI 5 to 2.0. So let's run the same game again, npm or npm 
start for the web server. See, that's the very same app. So nothing changed for the app. And now here, npm run VDI5. Nothing changed except for the packages. Tests still work, everything still works. Major version bump, no breaking change, same, same. That's amazing. And also, uh, Luis in the chat is saying that uh, he loves this, uh, you know, covering uh, covering both TypeScript and JavaScript scenarios, and he's really impressed with the migration, as in the lack of migration. And in fact, on NCU, Marian Tice, hello, Marian, uh, says he's just used NCU right now. Cool. Very good of you guys. Um, one little thing I need to mention, um, if we look at the file system layout, how things are in place here, you see that the major um, configuration file by convention named wdio.conf.js. So this relates to VDI5's base web driver IO. Um, you can see that the specs path is specified as in find all test.js files in the folder web app test end to end and run those. WebDriver IO from version seven to version eight changed the way it looks for spec files. So um, VDI 5.1 has WebDriver IO 7 under the hood. VDI 5.2 has WebDriver IO 8, the most recent version under the hood. Meaning if you have some fancy um, file system layout where your tests are located, you now need to think on the perspective of the configuration file where is the configuration file and where are the spec files, the test files in relation to the configuration file? This is the very new thing and the only thing probably that you need to take care of when you do the migration. Um, of course, there's also um, updated documentation on VDI5. So we have a chapter here that says migration from one to two. And it has exactly the hint that I just uh, was talking about here. So you can see that the directory reference now start from um, the WDIO configuration file. And there's some examples here that highlight the changes. So we can follow those. Another thing to do probably, or to realize is um, I'm, I think I'm just gonna show this in the TypeScript version. So let me open up my newly created TypeScript application here. So this is what I just bootstrapped from scratch. There's nothing prepared in here. Um, and this is also a fresh install of VDI 5.2. So if you see this, um, everything is located now um, under the web app test end-to-end -end folder. So previously, when you bootstrap VDI5 into some um, UI5 application, the WDIO conf file went into the root directory adjacent to the UI5.yaml, which is the main configuration file for the UI5 application. So this changed, it's now in the end-to-end -end test folder in order to better separate concerns and to keep it all in one place. Um, this also sort of solves um, the challenge with having your own TS config in here, at least for the TypeScript um, context, and also the relation between WDIO, the configuration, and the test files. Um, but what you'll see in here, what I specifically want to highlight is you see um, there's the browser name Chrome. So this comes in per default. We're trying to test the application with Chrome. And down here, you'll see. In the services, AKA telling WebDriver what extensions to use, you no more see any Chrome driver reference that used to be necessary in VDI 5.1. In VDI 5.2, it's no more. So it's sufficient for you to specify UI 5 as the extension you want to use, telling WebDriver IO to use VDI 5. And then just the browser name. So again, let me run the application here. Uh, so this is starting up. Oh, wait. 
I still have the other one running. So let me close this web server first. Let me move the window out of the way. Now let's do this again. So the thing listens, uh, the application listens on port 8080. And if I now um, run EDI5 here again, you'll see it opens up Chrome and does the minimal test run, just as I showed you previously. So here, okay, the basic logger and then the basic test thing. Now watch this. I can now simply put in another of the supported browser, be it Edge or Safari or whatever, in the configuration file, save it, and now run the test again. And what happens is no more Chrome starting up. Oh, you can't see this, this was too fast. No more Chrome starting up, but Safari starting up. I hope I can be quick enough to, no, I can't. <laughs> the window is so quick. Um, I'll just open up a debug window and put a debug uh, a breakpoint in one of the, in the test so I can show you enough time to move windows around. So let me. This, by the way, is the minimal test file that gets put into place. So let me put a breakpoint in here and then run the whole thing again. And now it's going to halt um, execution at that point in time, which gives me then time to actually move the Safari window down here. So <laughs> I can show you that um, it's now testing with Safari instead of Chrome. So let me play this. And again, um, showcasing that you can also put breakpoints in the test code with minimal effort. You open the debug terminal in VS Code, put the breakpoint in there, and you have then time to ex uh, to um, ex examine the application under test or whatever, well, debug. The... So that is probably another cool thing about VDI 5.2, a lot less hassle with uh, setting up your um, CI browser targets. So, okay, a couple of new features to VDI 5.2 or specific to VDI 5.2. And this is also where I'm uh, essentially just gonna use VDI 5 as an example itself. So let me move the right browser uh, window in place here. So what do you, what do you see here? Um, as the name suggests, it's the VDI5 code base. And we are here on the main branch. I made one little modification that's irrelevant for now. Um, and we're using VDI5 to test VDI5, meaning um, there's an examples folder down here. And in the examples folder, we have all kinds of um, apps lying around. And we're testing those apps with the help of VDI5. Like, best example of dog fooding. Um, what I want to show you is, uh, first of all, the new build work zone enablement. So SAP build work zone comma standard edition is um, the new thing in terms of portals. Oh, I don't even dare saying the word, but it's the next thing in terms of, um, well, anyway. So, um, but we're supporting it in VDI 5.2.0. Um, with the new configuration option, BD, BTP work zone enablement, and also with the authentication specific configuration option down here. Now, what does this do? Um, I will run the test in a second, but I'll first walk you through um, each and everything um, here in the configuration. So the BTP work zone enablement um, configuration option delegates bootstrapping VDI5 at runtime into both the shell. So that's a, like a, a reminiscent to formerly uh, known as launchpad thing. So the shell and the content area of work zone. So uh, it delegates the bootstrapping VDI5 into the shell and the app area. So you have VDI5 available at both. Um, the base URL here, if you're using the um, launchpad, uh, launch oops, the uh, work zone enablement um, needs to point to the application under test, so not to the um, work zone itself, but to the application under test. And um, 
build work zone standard edition requires um, a custom IDP to be in place. And it has um, an option to uh, allow for biometric authentication. And, in, and this is something that you can never fulfill at runtime um, in an end-to-end -end test environment in automated tests. So there is no way to have some sort of fingerprinting be in place. So the automated test runs. So we need to disable that. And this happens with the help of this di disabled biometric authentication true. And you need to set the IDP domain of, well, the IDP that is configured for your build work zone instance. Um, I'm running this regular journey test here um, for the BTP work zone enablement. How does this look like? Um, it does two things. It first clicks um, the avatar button in the work zone shell in order to test that we properly bootstrap VDI 5 into the work zone shell. And then it finds um, a table in the application area and uh, checks that there are sufficient actions. So I put breakpoints in here already so we can uh, have a good look at what this all looks like. Um, so I'm in here in the TypeScript application folder where this uh, test resides. And I'm gonna, oh, there's already a de debug terminal open. So I'm gonna, I forgot the name of the NPM script. Let me look it up. Uh, it's the package JSON here, test work zone. Okay, npm run test work zone. So what this does is again, it boots up um, in this case, Chrome as the target browser. It logs into um, the BTP work zone instance. And then we have the first thing. So you can already see also in the logs that um, VDI 5 says I'm delegating the VDI 5 injection to the work zone enablement, as I said, into the shell and into the app area. And then in here, you see the convenience method, method VDI 5 uh, to work zone shell. So if I step over this, we're now at the point where the application is going to click on the little avatar down here. So let me do this. So I clicked on the little avatar, so the pop-up comes out, and then it validates that the pop-up is there. So I'll fast forward to the next thing. Breakpoint halts again. Now we're moving into the app area. The focus is now down here on the Cap S flight app that's uh, deployed here in this work zone instance. And now we're checking that the table contains these many actions. So, and that's the end of the test. And you can see then, um, while well, the tests pass, obviously, but this should showcase how you move between the shell area of a work zone and the app area with the help of the convenience methods, um, VDI 5 to work zone app and to work zone shell. And should also show what you need to configure in terms of, well, the BTP work zone enablement. Um, everything that I've just shown here is also documented in the VDI 5 documentation. And again, I can only urge you look at VDI 5 itself into the sources and you know, copy pasta from the examples that we have in here. Okay, second thing I want to showcase um, is the cap local auth support that is now new in VDI 5.2. CAP as in the cloud application programming model. Um, another great things coming from SAP, um, actually one of the best things that SAP has produced during the last four years, it's I think 10 years. Okay, DJ says 10 years. So it's 10 years. And um, this also is a config, a conf, config, yeah, uh, config time only thing. Um, we've put, as you can see, a separate example here in the VDI 5 base, cap-bookshop-vdi5. If that rings a bell, well, it should, because this is the source code of the official developer SAP COM tutorial for cap and VDI 5. So we're not doing something um, dedicated here for cap support. We're just pulling in the remote Git repository. 
and we are running the tests against that remote source to always validate that we're actually um, supporting the right thing. And if you look in the configuration file that's in the sources of this um, official developer SAP com tutorial, you can see that the provider is basic auth now and the basic auth URLs um, configuration parameter is new. And what you need to do here is put in some OData service that you wanna authenticate against prior to calling up the UI, which means prior to running your end-to-end um, -end tests with VDI5. Now let's look at everything under the hood. I'm just gonna change into the appropriate folder. Um, so let's start up, up the, uh, the CAP application. So for those of you familiar with CAP, oops, excuse me, you can see what's happening here. Um, in the examples CAP Bookshop VDI5 folder, we are just running CDS deploy and CDS run. So it uh, deploys to a SQLite local database, and then it gives you a local host 4004, which looks like this. And as you can also see, if you were to call up the admin application now, here, if I click on the web application here, it's going to post, uh, it's going to ask me for credentials. And same thing happens if I put, if I create books endpoint for the admin section, again, I need to provide credentials. So this is something that was kind of a, an effort previously, if you were developing with both UI5 and CAP, which you should, by the way, and then use um, VDI5 for end-to-end -end testing, whatever business processes you implemented in your UI5 application, you had to find some sort of a workaround to authenticate at test time against the CAP endpoints. And this is now possible, as I said, with the help of this configuration option, you just put in any kind of service you want to authenticate against. This sets the proper session cookie and then allows for you to operate um, the test with um, the credentials in place. Uh, you can see the bookshop test in here. Um, it does create a new book and it should then check that the book is added. So this is again taken straight from the developer SAP com tutorial, nothing specific here. And um, if I now run the very same test, um, with the help of BDI-5, so this bootstraps the application, then opens Chrome in headless mode for actually putting in the new book. And this then works with the help of the new um, authentication option that you have in VDI5 2.0. All right. So this is the second thing I wanted to highlight um, that comes with VDI5 2.0. And of course, it's also in the documentation. Um, wrong window so you can see that here's the btp work zone enablement and in authentication then you have a section on cap authentication down here okay um, so far, any questions from the chat? Anything that needs answering right now? Uh, not right now. It's, uh, the, I think they're all spellbound by uh, some of the awesome features, I mean, uh, uh, including me. So uh, yeah, so far, so good. Thanks, Volker. All right. So then let's move on into the actual deep dive into the um, code base of VDI5 2.0 um, to show you what's going on under the hood. I'm just gonna close everything here and fold up everything so we can start from scratch. Um, you can see that um, 
there is two folders, ESM and CJS here. So these represent the build results that happen. Once you install everything here um, with NPM I, which I've already done, and then you run NPM run build, watch. It um, compiles the TypeScript sources of VDI 5 that reside in SRC into ESM and CJS, already hinting you that VDI 5 is now both a common JS and an ESM and ES module. So you can use it in all kinds of environments, plus also in TypeScript. Um, how does this look like? From a pure um, coding perspective, again, go to the examples folder. You have your plain old UI5 JavaScript app in there. And in package JSON, you see um, nothing specific. It's just your regular CJS module. But if you look into web app, for example, test end to end, and in basic in here, basic test JS, you see that VDI 5 here is plain old required from the NPM module. Okay, classic CJS notation. As opposed to if you look into the minus ESM equivalent in the package JSON, you see that it says type module indicating this UI5 app is, a, is an ES module. And if you look into web app test, ESM test, you can see that the requiring of the module is now an import. And it looks the same as it does in TypeScript. So the import syntax of ESM and TypeScript is the same. But VDI 5 works in all environments. Now, again, coming back to the VDI 5 sources themselves, they compile, so that it's written in TypeScript, it compiles into an ESM and then CJS module, but it's coded as an ESM module itself. So it says somewhere here, <laughs> I can't even find it. So the default is type module. So this is the VDI 5 source, uh, source code itself. Um, we have several several TypeScript uh, configurations that are then taking care of the compilation process into CJS and ESM. And the magic where VDI 5 calls to the record replay API, takes locates the UI 5 control and hands it back to Node.js scope is all in the client side GS folder. Now, what you'll notice in here is the file extensions are .cjs. This is a direct consequence of having VDI 5 itself being an ES module now. You need to denote plain old JavaScript syntax with the file extension .cjs. That's the sole reason why we have .cjs in here. And again, in the examples folder, you have all kinds of test cases um, that you should regularly peek into um, and get your inspiration from. Um, well, how do you set up the whole thing? If you were to contribute something, there is a section again in the documentation that makes this pretty clear. It says contributing and of course for the impatient developer. So what were you to do? And I'm just gonna do this and follow along, let me. So the first thing is use NVM because we're uh, specifically developing with a version of Node.js. So we're all the same in terms of coding. So I do NVM use and I see, okay, there is an NVM RC file in the repository. It says use Node 18. Now I'm using Node 18. Then I'm in installing all required modules both for dev time and for um, then test time so this takes a little while um, and then after that i can already start building 
VDI5 itself into an ESM and CJS module. So found zero errors, waiting for file changes. Now the magic also is you can now start any sort of web server and start developing with VDI5 in the same repository. So you do not have to install VDI5 over and over again in one of the example folders in here. It per the setup of the entire project has VDI5 available already with the code that you're live coding in the sources in the source itself. So how does this look like? I'm again doing NVM use here. Then I'm just going to start up the plain old JavaScript application. So how does it look? This is the plain old JavaScript application that we're using for VDI5 to test. So it's not pretty, but it's also not supposed to be pretty, but it's got all kinds of stuff in here that's um, suitable for testing. And then as the documentation says, in another terminal, I can just run some sort of a test, specifically the basic test JS that resides in examples, UR5JS app, web app test end to end. So let me do this in another terminal. So boots up Chrome, tests something. I think this has a lot of pop-up tests in there. Yeah. And at some point it's done. And this is all that's, so let's look at the basic test JS file as well. So this is, I think the right one here. And um, then you can already start um, developing in either VDI5 or in the test itself, make changes, try stuff out, improve things. So it's literally as easy as this to set up the development environment for VDI5 itself. We're reusing a lot of standards here. This is why all of this is possible. And also, of course, thanks to the great foundation of WebDriver I always. So for me, that's the end of the plunging into the deep dive. That's the end of the fourth block. I wanted to show you what have you seen so far? Um, you've seen what is specific to VDI 5.2 in terms of the developer experience when you start from the ground up from a greenfield approach, bootstrapping your UI 5 app with the help of the easy UI 5 generator, then NPM init VDI 5, and off you go, including a sample file, both in TypeScript and in JavaScript. You have seen migration. It's a matter of updating the dependencies. That's it. You do not have to, to change anything else. Um, little asterisk, risk, uh, watch for the location of the test files in relation to your configuration file. Um, you have seen a couple of selected new features. That's the PTP work zone enablement and the support for cap local off for the dev time specifically. And I've taken you um, on a really quick um, plunge into the VDI5 source code to show you how you can get going, developing, and improving VDI5 itself, because it is open source, it is from the community, for the community, and it needs the community to evolve. Thank you so much, Volker. <clears throat> my goodness me, my head is full. <laughs> so I'm sort of glad you stopped there. That was an amazing uh, deep dive and uh, session on VDI5. I mean, one of the things for me that I love about what you showed um, was that, in my opinion, I think the, the whole VDI5 um, cottage industry and the tools that you use and the way that you and other folks like Simon here, Simon's on the, is on the chat, Simon Cohen. Um, it's a, it's, it's great example. It's a great example of how to use tools properly. You know, I know, to, for example, when you, you know, when you use NVM, you know, I think a lot of people are aware of NVM and NCU, but maybe I, I don't use them. I know, for example, that you have uh, prettier, you have a, a prettier RC uh, in there as well. So, 
as well as getting all the goodness from VDI 5 and CAP and UI 5 and work zone, launchpad, whatever it's called these days, and anything and all the other things that VDI 5 is all about, you get the bonus information as well. So that for me is yet another reason to start diving into VDI 5. So thank you again, Folke. We had we, we did have a question from I just missed it when I summarized before there was no questions. I think it was a bit of a delay. Uh Marion asked a question. It was answered by Simon. Uh thank you, Simon. But also there was a bit of a follow-up question from Marion also on authentication. Um, and I've got a couple of questions, uh, a question from Luis as well. So Marion's question on the authentication part uh, is would it be possible to authenticate with SAP Passport to SAP BTP? Yeah, we discussed this already amongst the core comp contributors. It should be, um, comma, if it's sufficient to send an HTTP request containing the certificate. Um, so we've not investigated this. There's no PUC for this, but it should. I mean, we have to try it out. It's, it has not been asked for too much, so I can't really say yes or no. It should be a technical POC to see whether it's possible or not. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, thank you, Volker, and, and thank you for the question, Marian. So another question from Luis. Uh, which other problems can we face during the migration? I think I know the answer to that, but uh, go, go for it, Volker. The only thing I can think of, as I said, is uh, the location um, of the <laughs> spec files, the so-called spec files, aka test files, in relation to the um, configuration file that these need to match up now. Um, I've included, our, or we've included a couple of examples here, how things um, might have to change from version one, VDI 5.1 to VDI 5.2, but it's, in my opinion, a minimal effort. So it's traversing the directory hierarchy differently, and that's it. Other than that, um, things should work out of the box. It's a drop-in evolution to VDI 5.1. Perfect. So I think that brings us to a close. Uh, thank you so much, Volker, for um, this session. The fact that we looked at code is fantastic. The fact that we did everything in the terminals for me is especially fantastic. But I don't think there are many sessions out there generally that take us into the code base of the thing we're learning about as well. So that for me was a super highlight. Again, lots of thanks and hearts and things from the chat. Thank you, everybody, for participating, joining, uh, asking questions and so on. Um, have a great rest of uh, Friday. This marks the first of uh, some sessions that marks the end of week one of DevToberfest. There's a tutorial that's going to have a question in it about some of the things that Falka said today. Um, if you want the points for this, you've got to go, go and complete that tutorial. Um, that'll be available later on today. I've put the URL to the documentation site that uh, Falka shared before. That's in the chat already. So it just remains for me to hand over finally to Falka to say uh, goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Well, as I said, goodbye, or as DJ said, goodbye from me as well. Uh, two things. Um, remember that VDI 5 is also is dual licensed under Apache 2.0 and the derived beerware license, which allows any of you VDI 5 users to buy any of the contributors uh, a drink of his or her choice. So that being said, have a good rest of your day wherever you're watching from and whatever time it is in your zone. Bye, folks.